Hi everyone. Before we get started, I just wanted to give you an update. I did this folded book organizer the other day. The video is on my channel and a subscriber suggested that I could use it for housing my small stencils. So that's what I did and I just thought I would share an updated picture with you. Okay, let's get started on today's project. Hello everybody. Today I'm going to have some fun and create a huge piece of homemade collage paper. I was on Instagram last night and I follow the Mad Fox. She sells all kinds of really cool um, vintage ephemera paper and doodads and just lots of really cool stuff. Anyways, she had a link to a YouTube video and I didn't think she had a YouTube channel but I followed the link and here it, it's her husband's channel and he does a lot of DIY and woodworking but he had a video on there making a great big piece of collage paper just using scraps. He did it, he put uh, wax paper down as a base and then glued everything on top of that and when it was all dry he could peel the wax paper off the back and he had a two-sided piece of collage paper. So I thought, well, that's cool, but generally when I use collage paper, I'm putting it down in my journal and I would feel bad if I liked both sides and I had to stick it down. So I am just, I have just this um, roll of white, it's like shelf paper. I can't pull it up because it's taped down, but that's what's under under here I have a piece of tempered glass on the top of my art bench as a good base because my bench is wood and it used to be my dad's woodworking shop where I'm at now and it's all gouged and has dents and dings and oftentimes I would find texture I didn't want in my work so I put the glass top on it and then I just put the paper it's cheap. I think I have an extra roll somewhere to show you. I think you know what I'm talking about. Here it is. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just, it's called drawing paper roll. You can buy it for like those kids easels and you just pull it down and tear it off. It's, you know, it's fairly heavy paper, medium weight, I would say paper. Anyway, that's what I'm going to glue to today. So I just, I have it taped like I normally do to my bench top. And I just went through my bins and pulled out a bunch of papers that I'm going to use. I wanted to show you this though. I was looking for sheet music and I was on Amazon and I was in the used book section and I got this for a dollar you guys and it's it's just all sheet music piano music so anyway if you're looking for sheet music that might be an option for you as to where to go to look just kind of have to dig through there and find the kind of music you're looking for I also bought a book that had it said guitar music I had no idea that guitar music looked totally different than like this music written out because I never played guitar I played trumpet but not guitar <laughs> anyways it, it'll do it's fine it was also just a dollar so anyways that's where I just tore up some of those pages and I have some of my <clears throat> excuse me my digital downloads that have a lot of these French receipts in them. Then I have some pieces that I found, I don't know, digital downloads that were free online from different blogs. This was just a page of handwriting, I think from the New York Public Library Digital Archives. These were from my digital download pack, just the old paper pack. Same thing with that. That's one of the French cheese receipts. Some book papers. That's a book page that I, piece of book paper that I put a stamp on. Um, this was a 
photograph of some watercolor paper that I rusted, an old receipt, dictionary pages, just a real variety, more book, papers, some deli, wipe up deli paper, some old map paper, yellow pages, uh, I think that's Tim Holtz, just kind of, you know, torn off odds and ends pieces from packaging or papers that I didn't use the whole thing of, some collage paper from Tim Holtz, this is some of that stamp tissue paper I made a while back, books, more stamp tissue. This was two pages that I saw on Pixabay that I thought kind of went together color-wise, but I saw her first and I loved her. So she's going down as one whole piece. There's some more collage fodder. Yellow pages. This was a page, like a background page from Pixabay. It's very faint, so I'm not sure It'll just probably show up as texture. And then I just have a handful of papers that are just plain. They have no images or writing or anything. So I just pulled a few of those out. So I am just going to start gluing stuff down. And the nice thing is, to my left is this roll of paper and it's not cut on that end. It's cut on the right hand end and I just pull it out and pull it out but I never cut it off at the left hand end. So if I want to keep going, I can just extend it. Oh, and so then I just took Elmer's glue all and I watered it down like two thirds glue to one third water. Put it in one of these little disposable cups and then I put about three normal squirts of fluid acrylic in burnt sienna and this will just help bring the color of all the papers together so I would probably speed you up whoops but I'm just gonna start and I'm not worried about how they're going down are they straight I definitely want some to be overlapped I want some to be wrinkled I'm just gonna go to town. This background paper is probably definitely gonna wrinkle and buckle because like I said it's it's fairly thin and I could I just I could have gessoed it or put a layer of matte medium or something on it but I can always take this to the ironing board and press it and get the wrinkles out and I don't mind wrinkles in my collage stuff anyway so not really going to worry about it Okay guys, I am done. I have 
a piece that's 43 inches long by 17, the finish size 17 inches deep. And I'm going to try to show you, because it won't all fit, but there's where we started. Got my girl on there. <laughs> and then I just kept going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> Am I at the end yet? You can't see the end there. So I mixed up glue three different times and each time the color was a little bit different. This is a little darker on this end than where I started, which is fine because this is going to get cut up, obviously. I can cut this into pieces to fit into my journal and have an instant background done. I can punch circles out of it and use it, you know, in any number of ways. I can make tags out of it. I can paint on top of it. I could just so, you know, a section and wipe it back. Anything that you would normally do when you build a collage background in your art journal or on a canvas, you can do. And it's just already all started for you. So it was fun. It didn't take too awful long. A couple of hours, I guess. It didn't seem like that long. It was fun and, of course, easy. I dried it like in sections. I got about this far from the beginning. I don't know, maybe 15, 18 inches in, covered. And then I dried it with my heat gun on the front and then flipped it and dried it on the back. And you can see on the back when it's still wet, you know, it's darker. And then you can just concentrate on those spots. There are a few little edges that are coming up, but I'll catch those when I use the papers and glue them to wherever they're going to end up and get those glued down. So it's not too terribly wrinkled. I'm going to wait. Obviously, it's not cured. It's dry to the touch. But I'm going to wait and see if it wrinkles a lot more. I may cut it in sections and just take it to my craft ironing board and try and iron some of the wrinkles out. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, it used up a lot of my scraps. Lord knows, well, you saw the pile that I started with, and this is what I have left. So I did use up a lot of scrap papers, and I mean, it's still connected to the roll, so I could keep going and even do more, but kind of tired of standing. So I just thought I would pop on and share the idea with you. And I tried to keep everything sort of in the vintage -y, which is what most of my scraps are anyway, but the um, PVA and water solution with a little bit of burnt sienna. You could put any color you want in there, but I wanted to kind of meld the vintage colors together. Now I could also take a distress oxide ink pad or if I wanted worried about it not being permanent I could use the archival ink the sepia and kind of go over it and smear it and but I think I will not do it on the big piece that I think for me anyway is better done when I'm actually working on a page in my journal and then I know what colors I want to use these are always going to be good colors and like I said you can always push it back with some white gesso so, hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you're going to make one. I'd love to see it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel analytics and helps me get found on YouTube when you give me the thumbs up or you share out my videos. So, if you do that, I'd really, really appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.